Pink Floyd's The Relics album. Yeah, that was, I was just really hooked on that at the time. So I wrote, ended up writing this. It was my first thing I wrote. It was sitting in a park on a mid-July day. Bright blue fills the sky. Birds are singing all around me. Car doors slam and children yell bam. One falls and drops a stand while the other runs for cover. Sitting here, it is quite the scene. Is this just another dream? I met him while he was doing his thing, playing music, where I worked nearby at a, an independent clothing boutique. And he would busk on the street. <laughs> I'd be playing guitar on this corner of a uh, place called Chapters, the corner of Chapters there in White House in Edmonton. Yeah, the bookstore. Mm -hmm. I think she brought me muffins one day. And uh, I asked if you were hungry. I was on my way. Yeah. Well, I ended up befriending you and other folks that worked uh, uh Yeah, in that area that happens though. Yeah. It's a little community. Yeah. So exactly. we all knew each other. Exactly. We knew each other through everybody anyway. But we yeah. never had spent time together. No. Not outside of the corner where he was playing music and I would bring up. And I was planning to move to Istanbul actually because that's where my mother had relocated from Hong Kong, not Canada, with my brother and my father. Um, so I was planning to move there. I had bought all my books, most of my belongings, and I was going to see what I could make happen. But then he had sent me a message over Facebook. I think he might have been fairly intoxicated at the time, <laughs> one evening. <laughs> and then in the morning started to backtrack, backpedal. And I was kind of, I don't know, I wasn't offended. I said, no, I've always seen you as sort of a speck of gold in my world. And we started to Skype every, every day. Too much. Yeah, about, Too much. about half a year ago, we started to yeah. Skype. When While she was I was in, in Istanbul. She was in Turkey, and I was in Edmonton, and then we... Uh, decided to date while we were... Started Skyping, and we started dating while she was in Turkey, and we were, and I was in Edmonton. <laughs> and then she ended up deciding that she wouldn't stay in Turkey, and that she was going to come back and join me on the road. I had to move my three three suitcases full of books back. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lots of overpaid baggage. Here we are, <laughs> in Montreal. And, um, the movement of being able to you know, drive wherever we want, wake up, go to the beach if we feel like it, or wake up at the beach if we feel like it. I'm taking time off and at the same time, I'm kind of playing this m mental Tetris where I'm figuring out what my next step should be with my photography. I have received job offers for certain things. I do have my equipment with me. You've I do been have- singing, You've been singing with me? I do have my lighting equipment with me and I right. am looking to hook back up with some agencies and see how I feel about that now. But I can do that on my own time. And because I'm here with Casper and we're on the road, I... She's been singing with me a little bit. I've been singing with him a little bit. Mm -hmm. With my father and my brother being a musician and music being all around me, like, sitting with him and singing along with him isn't uncomfortable. Dear God, forgive me <laughs> for all that I've done. Snowy days, the smoky green breeze, the whiskey and the rum. Dear God, I'm beginning to see, to dance into the sun. This game we play, confused and dazed, is the shadow on the run.
a door Shall I step inside? What will I find? Do I dare to explore? Dear God, like a stone in the sea I've sunk into the floor I turned the dust Began floating up Joined the sand upon the shore Well, I finished my last tour up in, uh, in New York City. I flew back home to Edmonton, where uh, I was going to stay with my mom because I was getting surgery. So during recovery, uh, while I was healing up, sitting in bed, I had gone out. The one night that I'd gone out, left my house. I don't know what happened, but our house got invaded, and all my stuff got stolen, like car, TV, uh, laptops, I just didn't know. you know game systems, everything was gone. And that's usually I, I was taking time off, so I had some bank, I had some money in my bank account to hold off while I was getting surgery and uh, while I was recovering. However, my car got stolen so I couldn't go play and make money at the old airport like I usually would. And so I was kind of hooped and then well, while I was down and out, because I had to sell my, I sold my last van in Toronto on tour in order to go into the States. And I flew into New Orleans and I finished up in New York. And so I didn't have a van either at this time. So this van only really came into uh, existence whenever, whenever I was healing up. I had some friends who came together, and uh, this buddy named Stu, Stu Kirkwood, he actually recorded my last album. He offered me to borrow his gu a guitar, and uh, so I took him up on that. And this fellow named Keith, he wasn't able to drive this van at the time for the next year, and uh, he said, well, I could use the van. You know, I was in the market for a new van. He said, hey, man, he offered, to, offered me to use this van. And that's like, this is a serious fan. It's got to be one of the nicest gestures anyone's ever, ever done for me in my life. This is like taking a, you know, taking a leap of faith with the last bit of money we had, that I had, was to go out and invest in a busking setup. And, because uh, I didn't know if we'd make a dime in Montreal, let alone actually making something to get by and feed us, you know? So that's the goal, is to stay fed, keep gas in the vehicle and keep, keep the ship sailing. Kind of use it as a, you know, just a little kind of a pop-up stage. I wasn't always on the giving end, I was on the receiving end. So since then, it's made me understand that I'm like applying, I'm applying for a position as a, move, as a musician. You have everybody that would be in these said venues, you would be giving them an opportunity to, to view your craft. And that's along with people who don't go see music, who don't go out and see and catch, out, catch shows. These people are all passing by you. So 
your audience goes from zero to 200 to zero to thousands of people who are able to witness and view your crowd. You start to realize going from city to city that communities are very, very different. It's on a different wave in a sense where you finally take it elsewhere and you realize, okay, and you put it out there for it to be observed and you start to see the reception and you're like, okay, maybe I just shouldn't try and be a part of the scene. My way of doing it now is just to do it like this and to show people what, what I have to offer, you know, like to allow people to become genuine fans, not to fake it, you know. There's a lot of people who, I don't know, it, there's a lot of questionable areas in the music, some music communities and scenes and whatnot. Last in Toronto, uh, we were playing outside Trinity Bellwoods Park. We were set up beside Trinity Bellwoods Park, and there was a solid crowd. It was more in the evening. Yeah, night had fallen, I believe, at this point. And I played the song that I wrote called Fool's Gold. And this fella, his name was Caesar, walks up, and he says, uh, he was hanging out for a bit. I seen him out there, and he says, hey, man, now, now you have some real gold. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? And he goes, and he, well, he hands, me, hands me this box. And uh, I opened the box. I was kind of reluctant. I was like, what do you mean? And I pull it out, and there's this chain. That's a big chain. I don't know if you can give it a <laughs> shot or not. But this is a, 
14 a four karat. 14 karat gold made chain in made, yeah, made in Italy. And mm. I was just in awe. And there's like a big crowd of people, and we're all kind of like. This is 18 year old. This 18 year old guy. And solid, solid person. Good nice, head on his shoulders. Good head on his shoulders. Yeah, super nice hat. Nothing. It's just like a really, really super kind and. That was a really kind of a unique moment for everybody when everyone was kind of like, oh, wow. And then everyone, up, everyone clapped and applauded for, for Caesar and... Uh, the crowd was in awe. Yeah. There, there was a little bit of magic in that. Everybody felt yeah. a little bit warm for yeah, whatever reason. There's a, real, there's a certain warmth to it. You know, you don't, it's not every day somebody walks up and gives you a 14 karat gold chain from Italy. Just for doing what you pretty much do every day. Yeah. I mean, I get the odd gifts, but that's definitely... Stood out? That one stood out. Currently, Right now, we're staying outside St. Louis Square. And uh, typical day would be us waking up. We're kind of early birds, so 9 o'clock in the morning, and then I'll go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I go outside, and so we pop the doors open. It's like, you know, this park's kind of like our backyard. It's a so there's... nice backyard, free Wi-Fi. Yeah, free... <laughs> all that stuff, all that good stuff. And so anyhow, there's squirrels and a bunch of pigeons flying around. So I'll go out and I'll feed. I'll feed the squirrels and birds every morning. That's I mean, usually I'll start, I'll go get my coffee and... If, it, it, it really depends where we stop. Like, yeah, if we have groceries, because we have now. a fridge. Sometimes we stay in Walmart parking lots. We have and, a fridge, so uh, then I'll make breakfast in here and yeah. we'll make coffee and things like that. Yeah. You know, get cleaned up for the day yeah. and go get coffee, hang out with the... Cook something, like a bagel, make yeah. coffee. You got coffee yeah. in here and kind of do your own thing. And then, find a washroom. Fridays, Saturdays are usually like the hustle day. Like we'll go out 12 o'clock on Friday and we'll be basically giving her until 12, you know, 12 nighttime, night nighttime Saturday. We'll go yeah. right until Friday night, all through Saturday, wake up Saturday around 12 or do our things, coffee and whatnot, and then set up shop and busk from 12 to and yesterday, Saturday, we did 12 till probably 5, and you play a few sets, you take mm -hmm. a break, talk to people, hang out. Yeah. Usually Sunday is Sunday, Monday, uh, clean up, hang yeah. out. Netflix at night, watch yeah. a series. So <laughs> uh, right now, just finished Stranger Things, <laughs> and uh, now we're on to getting her on Narcos. I'm getting caught up on like Narcos, because the second season. Season two just came out. I've already watched season one. <laughs> He's yeah, rewatching. I, I think it's great. And so. Just getting her caught up so we can watch season two together.
shedding some skin It's got me rearranging All the layers within And who I was before I, I can't recall oh, But it don't really matter much Or when I got I got some big ideas, too. <laughs> big ideas that I want to try and fulfill. But it's, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't want to spoil it and give it to you, <laughs> you know, before I do it. I'll show you my dreams. I'll show you my dreams whenever I get to that point. You know, I can't tell you. I have to more or less do it as a presentation. Like, this is my thought dream, and this is the idea, and then, unravel it and then say, wow, you know, then allow you, allow someone to observe it and to, uh, just like a painting on a wall, you know? I'll put my dream on the wall so people can look at it and observe it and, uh, take, you know, from, take, from, take from it what they want to take from it. You know? 